This video shows how solar heating might be introduced into a heating system using the energy zone unit. In this example we're using an energy zone 2 where there are two connections beneath the unit for zones flow return flow return uh, and this not, need not necessarily be the only way this manifold might be used but just an example of how it could be used. On the left hand side you see there are three connections as normal uh, for this type unit where we have a flow introduced at the top left hand side L1 and any heat input to or from that chamber that area enters or leaves that chamber at the top of the unit which would be the flow chamber. L2 is connected to the mid chamber and would be the bypass return for the flow if the flow isn't used by the zones and L3 would be the return back from zones. This would be the coalless water in the system would typically be used to return water back to uh, appliances that rely on low temperatures such as heat pumps or condensing boilers. Same applies on the left hand side. We have R1 being the top side again is connected to the top or hottest chamber flow chamber. R2 is onto the bypass chamber and R3 being right hand side R is onto the coldest chamber again to be used for whatever equipment might need to bring back the coldest return or to take the cold return back to a heat pump or condensing boiler or any such device requiring cold return. So on the top of the unit there are three connections T1 which is in this instance is used uh, to introduce a thermostat which would be used for the control method uh, to describe what's going to be shown in this video. T2 is used in this, this example as a flow to a hot water cylinder which would be connected through a coil in that cylinder and could be heated from the solar input or from the uh, gas boiler input as you'll see in a while and T3 is the return back from that hot water device. If we take off the insulation of the front of the unit you see the inside we have the energy zone 2 or 2 zone manifold in, in this example. Again I repeat this is not necessarily how this unit would have to be used it's just an example of how it might be used. So if we connect a zone, a low temperature zone say an underflow heating zone the underflow heating system so would have no pump at the manifold but the pump on the manifold could draw water through itself through the, the underflow circuit and cause that to be maintained at a given temperature. If more heat is needed the mixing valve would open the heat hot port and close the bypass port and therefore what you have is hot water would be drawn down from the hottest chamber in the manifold down through the pump and circulated back into the zone return. As the water achieves the temperature set at the mixing valve then the mixing valve will stabilize and the pump will regulate the flow of that water around the circuit drawing more hot as needed and returning or creating a bypass circuit as needed to maintain the floor at stable temperature. A non-return valve would be used in this instance to stop any inadvertent circulation heading down the return and maybe losing a little bit of waste heat onto the pipe work, which are, are into the zone that would not be required when the zone is not calling. If we take say a low temperature radiator circuit we could take it using a pump on the third connection being the flow out onto our flow connection into the right hand side of this radiator and carrying on to other radiators and the return coming back onto the left hand side of the radiator and back up through an non-return valve into the second zone connection on the energy zone 2 unit. If other zones were required you would simply purchase a larger manifold in the first instance giving you more zones whatever required as necessary is available. So if we now have a gas boiler we want to introduce we would take the hottest water from the gas boiler we take the flow into the R1 uh, connection into the hottest chamber at the top of the manifold and the return being a condensing boiler from the lowest chamber and so we have a perfect circuit with the zones providing the coldest water to be returned back ensuring that the condensing boiler will be uh, condensing at the maximum amount of time. 
if we now look at a hot water circuit, as I said earlier, we're using T2 as a flow, this time through a pump, bypassing an uh, automatic air vent, so eliminating any air in that circuit, down through a high recovery coil and back down into the unit. It's highly recommended that the coil should be at least equal to the output from the boiler in this situation because then the, you know for a fact the boiler will be condensing as much as possible and delivering hot water as much as possible and allowing the system to go back to a low temperature as quickly as possible. This boiler would be the type that would have two potential temperature outputs. One is a high temperature where voltage-free contacts in the boiler would cause the boiler to go to its maximum set point, typically 75 to 80 degrees C and uh, at that time the pump will be delivering all its heat into for hot water heating and raising the temperature to whatever is desired typically 60 or 62 degrees in the stored water the return would come back down be collected by the condensing return and the boiler would eventually bring the water up to temperature when it does the boiler then uh, would turn off at that and if there's a heating coil from say the underfloor or the radiator zone then a different circuit is made in the wiring of the boiler and that circuit would cause the boiler to fire at a lower or maybe weather compensated temperature and therefore cooler water would be available in the manifold. Of course at that point in time this pump the DHW pump or hot water pump would not be running and there is no potential for the cooler water being delivered by the boiler to rise up and overheat the hot water stored. So you can maintain the hot water temperature in the cylinder very simply by stratification where the hot water is captured in at the higher level within the coil and the cooler water being delivered by the boiler or whatever is necessary, heat pump if necessary, would be used for the low temperature heating circuits such as the underfloor or radiator circuit. So now if we introduce an exchanger that would be used to collect heat from solar heating and in this one we've got our inner coil in, a, in, a, in an outer tube. A pump is made available on the return and if you look the return water is coming from the lowest chamber in the manifold down through the pump and if the exchanger uh, requires the pump to run then the control would cause that pump to come in otherwise a gravity circuit might be sufficient to take heat from that exchanger and raise it up and into the top chamber so therefore this solar station with a pump that would take collect heat from the roof or from the solar panel would pump the cold water up the hot water would come down through this non-return valve and at the non-return valve uh, it would not be allowed uh, once it enters into the heat exchanger chamber to move back out so in other words the heat is trapped in there can only be used by the manifold and this of course prevents a lot of waste energy drifting back out onto the pipework which is most often the situation with typical installations it's a very good idea to put a non-return valve all as, as a connection to any kind of a storage device or heat transfer device so the heat gun once it's pushed through by the pump will not come back out now if we move on you'll see that the solar panel saw therefore being mounted on the roof as it heats up to temperature the control panel uh, control system would pump cold water from the heat exchanger at the manifold up collect the hot water and push it down into the exchanger at that point in time a thermosiphon circuit would be created that would cause the manifold to heat and therefore provide heat for the zones or if the zones weren't calling by decision of controls or because they're just not needed then the thermosiphon would be created by the energy zone manifold which would allow a heat to transfer up and into this high recovery coil so in other words this pump is the only pump that would actually be needed if the system is just delivering enough solar heat to just maintain the hot water if it starts to get to too high a level then the control system should cause the second pump or the secondary pump on the solar system beneath the heat exchanger to force the water past the, the heat exchanger at a greater rate and therefore heat the hot water or, or whatever is necessary much faster. This pump, so the, the return pump on the heat exchanger is a matter of the correct control methodology being used. So what we have is solar system connected to a gas boiler 
both of them can contribute to hot water generation and at the same time both of them can contribute to the heating within a premises very simple system again very easy to operate and certainly very easy to control as always this information has been brought to you by energy awareness the makers and distributors of the energy zone unit